Hello and welcome back to Vermont Craft Tours. I'm Sarah Scully and I have a new hobby. Um, I wanted to share with you I've been making kombucha this year. Um, just started a couple of weeks ago uh, so I wanted to share a little bit about how it's going and what I've been doing. Um, and I was inspired to start making kombucha because I have been drinking it more often um, and it's not cheap. I'm sure it's worth every penny but just like anything else, if you make it yourself, you can save a lot of money. Um, and I was interested in the process. I've made other fermented foods, um, most notably kimchi. Um, and I thought, you know, okay, well, we make beer. That's another uh, fermented thing. Um, but that's mostly, uh, Rick's mostly in charge of the beer making. So I just thought it would be fun to try and see if I could get something that's as good as what I can get at the store. Um, and this is my first batch um, that I made, uh, flavored with raspberry, my first complete batch. Um, and it's in this beer bottle, um, but I'm using it because it has the flip top on it. So we'll get to equipment and such in just a second. Um, but I thought I'd just go ahead and try it and see what we think. I did hear a little bit of air pressure there, so I know it's carbonated. Maybe not very carbonated, but it does have a few bubbles. You can see a few bubbles. You can see a few floating things in there too. <laughs> That's uh, probably raspberry seeds or pulp. Um, yeah. Mm. So it definitely smells a little of that tangy, kind of lacto fermented smell that you get. Mmm. It's quite refreshing. Um, it's definitely very raspberry. I probably overdid it on the raspberry juice for this batch, um, having done some, some more reading on how much to add uh, when you're talking about flavorings. Um, but it's very nice. It's not too sour. I did add a little honey to my raspberry juice on this batch. So here's how I did it. So I, um, I was going to start with just some raw kombucha from the store, but I couldn't find any immediately that didn't have fruit juice and sugar and things added to it. Um, and if you're going to start with somebody else's kombucha, you need it to be just the kombucha tea um, and not with any fruit juice in it. So I wound up buying a starter as part of a kit. Um, and that was a little bit expensive, but the advantage there is that you don't have to wait for your SCOBY to grow. Um, the SCOBY is the living organism that um, makes the kombucha that does the fermentation process for you, and you have to start with one. Um, unlike something like sourdough starter or certain kinds of cheese making, you're not just using the ambient um, bacteria in the air, you're actually trying to get a very specific bacterial yeast um, cohabitation thing uh, <laughs> to, to start growing to make your kombucha. So you do need to have either kombucha or a SCOBY from someone else. Um, so like I said, I, I sprang for one um, as part of a kit. It was about 11 or $12, which is like two jars of kombucha at the store. Um, but that's been doing really well. It's um, you know rehydrated really nicely and um, started making the tea right away. Um, so that probably um, saved me some time from having to do multiple badges and build up and, and get a healthy scopey um, going. Um, so to start out, you just need a starter, and then you make sweet tea at a certain ratio. So it's just black tea and sugar. And I do use organic evaporated um, cane sugar that hasn't been highly processed. So I like to think it's a little bit healthier than highly refined white sugar, but it's basically sugar. Um, so you mix that in the correct proportion, and I'll, I'll post the recipe I've been using on the website. And then you let it sit for at least a week. Um, it can be longer, especially it's mid-January um, here, so um, you want to make sure your ambient temperature is warm enough for, for it to um, ferment, and it will ferment at cooler temperatures. We keep our house right around 58 to 60 degrees, so it might be a slower ferment than some other, um, if it was you know summertime here and it was 80 degrees in the house, um, but it does do the job. And then after a week or two, depending on how um, kind of strong and tangy you like your kombucha, um, you take out that fermented tea, you save a little bit for your next batch, and you scoop your scoby out, um, 
and save that, put that in a safe place for a minute while you make more fresh sweet tea. And then once that's cooled down thoroughly, you add your SCOBY and your reserved tea from the previous batch to that fresh tea and then start the process over again. So that's how you do your first ferment. That's how you get your kombucha base. And you can just bottle that and drink it straight up. Um, it's perfectly good, perfectly good for you that way. Um, a lot of people, uh, myself included, like to add something um, to their kombucha to take taste uh, just a little more interesting. Um, you get a little bit less of that funky um, fermented taste and more of a fresh fruit taste. Um, so from my first batch, I had a ton of leftover raspberries in the freezer and I was trying to clean the freezer out. Um, these are raspberries that are a combination of things I bought for desserts and also from harvested from my neighbor's uh, garden. They have an abundant raspberry patch and they always have extra. So um, I had several bags of frozen raspberries and I just decided to cook those down slightly to get the juice out and be able to strain out the seeds and the pulp. And that worked really well. Um, I had a lot of juice, so I used some for this first batch of kombucha, but then I froze um, my remaining juice in tr uh, ice cube trays so that I could portion it out and use it for another batch or two of tea. And um, yeah, that's worked really well. I also added a little bit of honey um, because the raspberry uh, flavor was really strong and intense, and I wanted to just add a little sugar, and that also helps with the second fermentation. So your second fermentation, you're going to take your made kombucha base and you're going to add, you can either add um, chopped up whole fruit like apple slices or lemon wedges or whatever you want to put in it, um, or you can use fruit juice like I did with the raspberry. Um, so I took my cooked raspberries, I strained out all the pulp and the seeds and just used the juice with a little honey. Um, and you're going to mix that together. You'll need quite a few um, vessels on the day that you're you're doing kombucha if you're doing both steps at the same time. So you have, you know, you have your fermentation vessel that you're moving the finished tea from. You're making a fresh batch of tea to replenish, and then you also have some kind of vessel for the flavoring that you're adding and something to mix that in before you bottle. Um, so you probably use all the measuring cups and bowls that you have in your kitchen. Um, but it's not that hard. It took me about 20 minutes or so to do this last weekend. Um, and I'm thinking today I might make another batch um, and do like a ginger uh, kombucha. So it would be sort of like homemade ginger ale. Um, but uh, when you're talking about the second fermentation, you're going to add whatever flavoring you want. You can add a little bit more sugar or some honey or something to it if you want to sweeten it. Um, and then you're going to let that sit for another couple of days, preferably in some kind of pressurized vessel. So that's why I'm using old beer bottles with these um, flip top gasket tops, because um, that will pressurize and that will actually give the beverage some bubbles. Um, it will self carbonate just a little bit. Um, and keep those in a warm place. The back bedroom of our house is the warmest in the house. It gets quite hot in there, even in the winter. Um, so if I shut the door, I can put my kombucha bottles back there and they'll actually uh, ferment within about two days. And then once your, your bottles are pressurized, and you'll know you can check them and open them. And if you get that of um, carbonated gas, then you can close them up and put them in the fridge. And they'll last for you know a few weeks. Um, you don't want the pressure to build up too much. You don't want to leave it sitting around um, forever. But I think like a lot of fermented foods, it basically doesn't really spoil. It just gets really, really aged. So, but you know, the whole point is to drink it, right? So you can drink your tea um, and go through your batches. Uh, it makes a great gift. I'm planning to give some away when I make more than we can drink. And um, looking forward to trying new flavor combinations and new recipes. So. Um, as I experiment, I might do a follow-up episode uh, just on the different flavorings I'm using. If you like this episode, let us know, and I hope you'll try your own uh, homemade kombucha if you're into that. Um, it does have quite a few uh, vitamins uh, in it, and it's, I think it's pretty healthy. So, um, cheers. Here's to your health, and thanks for watching.